Chinese Russian friendship. How is it? Well, it is getting stronger day by day. However, that was not always the case. Actually, before in the history, Russia and China had not always a good relationship with each other. In fact, they had actually wars with each other. And right now, some land that belonged to China is actually occupied by Russia. Part of this land is now a famous Russian city. You maybe have heard of it. It's called Vladivostok. Yes, it was part of the Chinese Empire a while ago. Also, just a few years ago, maybe 10, 20 years ago, the friendship wasn't really that great between each other because they were two powerful nations having lots of resources people military strength and being so close to each other doesn't always go well also both had their respected areas of influence for Russia, it was the former Soviet Union area. Central Asia was kind of like the playground of Russia. And Russia didn't really like if China came in and played in this area around. Also, both sides didn't trust each other completely because both had really great military strength. And from both sides, it was the border with each other was the part with the least population. However, everything changed now. And now the relationship is so, so much better. The reasons are actually really funny and easy. First of all, the sanctions against Russia and the sanctions against China. So now economically both need each other to help each other out and therefore grow with each other. The other one is the alliances against China and Russia. Against Russia, NATO, you know about it. Then against China, there are actually several, the quads and the tricycles and whatnot they are called. For example, one is America, Australia, India, and others include France, England, and there are, there are like many different ones. And all of them are actually to contain China or to even maybe have war with China to invade China and whatnot. So both Russia and China are being provocated by Western nations and now have to see, well, we need to defend our countries. So we cannot afford we really to spend money and military on being suspicious about each other. So now both have to come together and be friends. Also, there's another thing I didn't want to really talk about, but I think it's fair to talk about it. And this is the bad mouthing of Russia and China and of both the people by Western politicians and the media. And I mean, like you must have heard it by now, all the talks about oh, Russia is evil, China is evil, and they're doing so many bad things, and the people are evil, they, will, they want to take over the entire world, they will take over everything, and they will take your lunch and everything. I mean, that's, that's just nonsense. And most people really know about it, but the media is just continuing about this. However, the media has already won partially with it, because nowadays, if you go on social media, including YouTube, you can see lots of people writing and saying things and pictures images and whatnot against china against russia and sometimes really really hateful i mean there are dozens of youtube channels right now on youtube that only make content against china they are anti-chinese youtubers i think actually it is against youtube policies to be really against one country and saying only negative things and lies i mean outright lies against one country but for some reasons they are allowed to continue and make a lot of money believe me you can actually look the biggest youtubers that are making content against china they make lots of money i think they make like several hundred thousand dollars us a year or to a million and they get also money from sponsors just to talk negative and lies about china and russia i mean and that's the truth that's how it is so china and russia need to be now together more close and work with each other together and set off against each other and therefore now china is cooperating more with russia and vice versa for example economically they are making now more and more mega projects yes mega projects i actually made a video in my german channel about it so if you speak german you can watch this one in short it's about pipelines huge long pipelines which are going from russia to china and only to china also some of the pipelines that used to go to Europe are now being diverted and included with new pipelines and that oil that used to go to Europe is now exclusively going to China and it will also then go to Japan, Korea and Russia for example is building pipelines and oil platforms, LNG platforms and all that stuff and harbors for LNG for all those ship tankers that will load the LNG and then sell it to Japan and to other countries and China is fine with it and saying look you can 
can build them on our border no problem and we will definitely not attack you on there and russia knows that they can build it there without any worries of china invading that area or attacking them because it's very sensitive because it's really expensive to build all those refineries and everything it's very close to the chinese border but china and russia are now closer and closer friends with each other so they can trust each other and build all those infrastructures did i just say infrastructures yes and they are building infrastructures now also in central asia together the area that used to be the place where really russia was only investing and china just a little bit is now the area where both nations invest heavily into the infrastructure and projects for example they make now railways and even highways from china that go through kazakhstan kyrgyzstan uzbekistan and such and then go to russia or even over the caspian sea mm -hmm. and every nation along that way will benefit from it before i just talked about oil and gas however there's one more important thing and that is nuclear power because russia and china have been now cooperating together to build nuclear power plants around the world and now also china wants to build several with this technology that they are developing together and continuously developing higher and higher they are building nuclear power plants in china i know they have been thinking about building 40 but those were with thorium not with uranium but maybe it will change that will make china for example independent from america and other nations like australia of oil gas gas uranium and other minerals because russia will provide his best new friend china with it however the friendship is not just built on money yeah of course the friendship between russia and china is really strongly about security and money but it's also about friendship and they're building a friendship diplomatic visits to each other invitations businesses which are being invited and they are planning now to create more like visas visas extensions and making it easier for people as tourists or as businesses to travel from each other's country and to do business easier and easier between each other. As a whole, we can see that potentially China and Russia will become an official alliances. Yes, Russia will probably be the subordinate, but who cares who is the subordinate? And I mean, China is richer and powerful and everything i mean it's just common sense and i know some of the western people will say oh this is why it will never work out no because in russia people see it too china's becoming a giant and just because china will be the senior partner in this relationship doesn't mean it cannot be a working alliances thank you very much for watching please give me a like it really helps me and i wish you and your family the very best see you next time bye